Hi, and welcome to CCK Live. My name is Brandon Paiva, and today I'm joined by my colleagues, Dallas Aguiar and Alex Gamash. Today, we're gonna to be discussing high value secondary claims. Before we get into sort of the details, let's start by defining what a secondary service connected claim is. So secondary claims are those that are filed for secondary service connected disabilities. A secondary service connected disability is a disability that results from a condition that is already service connected. So essentially we're saying that you're service connected for a disability and that disability has caused a complete and separate other disability. That other disability is now called a secondary condition. So you can be service connected for that condition on a secondary basis. Now in these claims for secondary service connection, Pri uh, providing a nexus or proving a nexus, which is the link between your secondary disability that you're seeking service connection for and your already service connected disability, these nexus and these links are very, very important to establish. The nexus between your primary disability and your secondary uh, disability must be clearly established in order to be granted on a secondary basis. This is different than a claim for an increased rating because you are claiming an entirely new disability instead of asking VA for an increase of an already service-connected disability. So now that we've kind of very generally laid the groundwork and kind of defined what secondary VA claims are, uh, let's start to talk about why these things may, may be beneficial to you or your, your case. Um, Alex, can you talk to us a little bit about why secondary service-connected claims will be beneficial? Yeah, so there's kind of two main reasons why they are beneficial. Um, so kind of getting into the first one, as with any VA claim, some conditions tend to receive higher ratings than others. Um, and when you get a higher rating, that means more monthly compensation. Um, however, it is common for a veteran with one service-connected condition to develop another. So that secondary service-connected condition will get a separate rating from the VA, and then they will have multiple service-connected conditions and using VA math, they will get a combined disability rating. So usually that secondary service connected condition will increase the overall combined rating, which means more compensation for the veteran. Kind of the second reason why um, it's important to file for secondary claims and why they're beneficial is that the veteran may also qualify for other VA benefits such as TDIU, which compensates veterans at the 100% level. Um, so again, the higher the monthly, the higher combined rating the veteran has, the better likely chance they have of getting TDIU because it's more condition service connected and more criteria being met. Um, for more information on TDIU, we have posted a link below and you can refer to that. Great. Thanks, Alex. So now that we've sort of gone over why these secondary claims may be beneficial, Dallas, I'm going to kick this one over to you. Can you talk to us a little bit about, you know, very generally speaking, how these secondary disabilities may actually occur? Yeah, so there are several ways that a primary disability can cause a secondary disability. Some diseases, just as part of the natural progression of that disease, can lead to other health complications, and they might rise to the level of a compensable disability, which will become eligible for service connection. For example, a veteran who's service-connected for type 2 diabetes might develop diabetic retinopathy, and that could be eligible for service connection. Additionally, treatment of a primary service-connected disability could result in a secondary disability. If the side effects from medication, chemotherapy, radiation, or other treatments cause a disability, this could be classified as a secondary disability. And finally, completing everyday tasks, going about your life, or working with a primary disability can lead to other health problems like general wear and tear. So for example, if you suffer a knee injury and it results eventually in a knee disability, you might compensate for this by putting added stress on other joints, such as your other knee or your hips. So this is another pathway for developing a secondary disability. Great information. Yeah, thanks, Dallas. Before we kind of dive into what the actual high value secondary claims are, let's first really, really quickly just recap how you can actually file a claim for these secondary service connected conditions or conditions that you're seeking service connection for on a secondary basis. Just like you would file an initial claim, you file a claim for a service connected disability that you're seeking secondary service connection for on a 526EZ, which is otherwise known as VA Form 21-526EZ. So the same way that you would initiate your claims process 
same way you would file for a service-connected disability, is going to be the same process and the same form that you're going to fill out for seeking service connection for a condition on a secondary basis. Specifically, veterans need to demonstrate two things in order to be granted secondary service-connected disability. They need a diagnosis for that secondary disability, and you're also going to need to provide or at least make sure that VA goes out and obtains medical evidence that shows the relationship between your service-connected disability and that secondary disability that you're seeking service connection for as well. If your secondary condition you know, could have many possible causes, you may often need a doctor's opinion or other medical evidence that clearly shows that your primary service-connected disability is the actual cause of that secondary disability that you're seeking service connection for. So same way you would initiate your initial claims process is the same exact form and same way you would go about filing a claim for secondary service connection. And that is done on that 526EZ form. So now that we've kind of laid the groundwork, how to file a disability claim, why these things are important. Let's talk about what are the actual high value secondary service connected claims that you potentially could file for. Um, now, this is not going to be an exhaustive list, but these are going to be some of the most common ways and what we at CCK believe are some of the most high value sort of secondary um, claims here. So, Alex, can you talk to us about uh, one of the first high value secondary service connected claims that a veteran may be able to file? Yes. Um, so kind of the first one that we see most often um, and has the most result um, would be depression and anxiety. Um, so like I said, they're two of the most common secondary conditions among veterans as they develop due to a wide, wide range of conditions. Um, so a veteran could develop depression or anxiety as a result of a service-connected cancer they have, an orthopedic condition such as a knee injury or a back injury, a TBI, and and many other conditions. Um, oftentimes, a veteran's condition will lead to depression if it prevents the veteran from participating in activities they used to enjoy, finding a steady job, or living their day-to-day -day life. Similarly, um, an inability to perform certain activities or fear of your condition worsening can also lead to anxiety. Um, so basically, if a veteran develops depression or anxiety secondary to a service-connected condition, they can receive secondary service connection for the depression and anxiety. Um, depression and anxiety are both rated under the general rating formula for mental health conditions, and these can be rated from a 0, 10, 30, 50, 70, or 100 percent based on the severity of the condition and the resulting level of social and occupational impairment. Great information, Alex. Thank you. We, we tend to see that, you know, sometimes, you know, veterans or even accredited representatives or, or anybody in the claims process, sometimes they may overlook that this is a potential avenue to pursue if you have a, a, a diagnosed psychiatric disability. Um, and you can sort of relate that to your service-connected orthopedic conditions. It's something that, that we see a lot here. Um, so it's definitely something that is available out there that, you know, I'm glad we're putting out information for, for kind of people to, to know. Um, Dallas, I'm going to kick this one over to you because, as we know, diabetes can cause a number of complications if a veteran, you know, let's say, for instance, a Vietnam veteran is service-connected for, for diabetes. Can you talk to us about some secondary service-connected claims that, that veterans may be able to file uh, regarding, you know, their main disability, diabetes, and what else it can cause? Definitely. One of the more common conditions that we find secondary to diabetes is peripheral neuropathy. Peripheral neuropathy impacts someone's peripheral nerves, and it can cause numbness, weakness, and tingling in the upper and lower extremities, sometimes more specifically in the feet and the hands. VA doesn't have a diagnostic code for peripheral neuropathy, so it rates it with another code. Um, VA rates it based on whichever nerve is affected by the neuropathy. Typically, the lower extremities is going to be rated as paralysis of the sciatic nerve under diagnostic code 8520. This code is going to contain ratings including a 10, 20, 40, 60, or 80. Diabetes can cause other complications, though, like we talked about earlier, diabetic retinopathy, erectile dysfunction, or kidney disease. These are all conditions that are eligible for secondary service connection. 
I think this is a perfect segue into our next um, sort of secondary service connected condition that we see is, is potentially high value. Uh, piggybacking off of, of diabetes, say a veteran has, has prostate cancer. Alex, can you talk to us a little bit about what secondary service connected claims might be available or, or are out there for veterans who may be service connected for prostate cancer? Yeah, so like Dallas mentioned, um, erectile dysfunction is a common secondary condition to diabetes. Um, but erectile dysfunction is also um, a secondary condition to veterans that have prostate cancer. Um, so while erectile dysfunction is typically given a non-compensable or 0% rating, veterans who are service-connected for erectile dysfunction may be eligible to receive SMC at the K level, which is loss of use of a creative organ. Um, this is a level of special monthly compensation that is awarded in addition to the veteran's monthly disability compensation, and the 2023 compensation rate is about $128. Thanks, Alex. She brings up a great point when we're talking about, you know, whether you're service connected for erectile dysfunction, you know, more often than not, or almost in all instances, um, you know, it's usually rated at a 0% rating, but, but take a look at your code sheet in that decision that you get, if you do get granted service connection for erectile dysfunction and look out for that SMCK, that is sort of where potential retroactive benefits can sort of stem from. So although it might be discouraging that you're service connected for ED at a 0% rating, check to make sure that you're service connected um, and you're also you know, qualifying for the SMC at that K level for loss of use of a creative organ, because that's going to directly correlate to your, your monthly compensation. So I'm going to kick this last one over to Dallas, uh, sort of piggybacking off of what we had said at the beginning, sort of the first uh, high value uh, secondary service connected claim, um, talking about psychiatric disabilities. Dallas, can you sort of wrap us up here with talking about things that may be related to PTSD? Absolutely. Um, you know, we commonly hear folks talk about hypertension being a result of toxic exposure. Um, but what folks don't realize is that you can you can develop hypertension due to other causes and you don't necessarily have to be exposed to something like Agent Orange to qualify for service connection for hypertension. So hypertension can occur as a result of another disability. And we kind of see this a lot with veterans who have post-traumatic stress disorder. You can have increased stress and anxiety that might cause you to develop high blood pressure. So hypertension is rated based on blood pressure readings under diagnostic code 7101, and you can receive either a 10, 20, 40, or 60% rating for hypertension. Great. Thank you, Dallas. And thanks you, Alex, for your uh, great information. So again, this is not an exhaustive list of conditions that may develop secondarily to other service-connected conditions. These are just mainly some of the high-value secondary uh, claims that, that we may have seen in our experience here. Now, of course, if you're unhappy with your current rating, or if you are granted service connection for a condition on a secondary basis, and you're unhappy with the rating that VA assigns, just like your initial, uh, your initial service connected disability, you can file a claim for an increased rating. You do have the right to appeal VA's decision. Under the AMA system, as we know, there are several appeal options from which veterans can choose based on their current situation. If you need help with your appeal, you also may benefit from contacting an accredited representative or even an attorney. The CCK team here offers free case evaluations to see if we can assist, if this might be something that you're interested in pursuing. For more information, please visit our blog at cck-law.com slash blog. Please be sure to like this video, subscribe to our channel, and follow us on social media for additional veteran content. This has been High Value Service Connected Claims. Thanks for watching.